In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave the power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace, in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Merry Christmas, everybody. On behalf of all of us here at St. Benedict's, to all of you out there in the network, wish you a very blessed and happy Christmas. Thank you for joining us as this is our way of connecting. St. John tells us in the prologue to his gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came to be through him. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And today we celebrate that light of the Word made flesh, become human like us, Jesus. I love to think of the birth of Jesus as a celebration, as we heard all through Advent as Emmanuel, as God with us. It is both in the beginning and for our own place in time, which is now, signifying our connection, our inherent relationship with God through all ages. And on this special day, we can reflect on the person of Jesus who connects us with God and with one another as someone like us. We can meditate on this passage of the gospel for a lifetime and still not exhaust its meaning. 
So what I would like to try to express are the many meanings Christmas might have for us in reflecting on my own experience and in a beautiful illustration from an article about current events in the universe. I love to think of Christmas for all the happiness and joy that it can bring, or at least that is what I feel every time Christmas comes around, as well as the sadness that often joins it or the discontent that lies underneath. I am reminded of Christmas's past that to my mind were happy times, maybe not perfect, but I remember happiness. As a youngster, gifts under the tree, and as I grew older, the joy of giving gifts to others. There have been Christmases during wars, times of tension, family distress, being away from home, and eventually for me, in the monastery. I remember what I was hoping to look forward to at Christmas in the monastery. That was a genuine focus on what Christmas is all about. The celebrating of the birth of Christ, to listen to the word, to celebrate Christmas without the commercial distractions and the overindulgent hangovers. Our experience of Christmas is many things to many people. So I am definitely not saying that my experience is everyone's experience. Yet our delight often surrounds us in a lot of what goes on around us. In the monastery, Advent is the primary focus of the winter season of cold, snow, shorter days, and makes us slow down and is conducive to prayer. Indeed, some of the commercialization of the season does seep in, but again, it is more about the brothers and the people who are friends of the monastery and the hundreds that usually visit us. It is a time to remember all of us, especially under recent circumstances that keeps us physically apart, but not away from our hearts or distant from our hearts. It is a time to reflect in a new way what the birth of Jesus means in our life, even when what we would call normal conditions are different. This life of the Word living in us came to me in the midst of the usual news. I was pleasantly surprised by a child's face in the New York Times recently that immediately caught my attention. It was of a little girl, an indigenous Mapuche girl in a corner of my screen, watching the solar eclipse from Chile. She was watching the recent solar eclipse in the Southern Hemisphere with her small eye protection glasses. And what really got my attention was her smile of absolute delight. I said to myself, wow, this is Christmas. Absolute joy and delight. Her expression captured what I was looking for. 
the gift for her was seeing, as the writer mused, the sun and moon playing tag, which with each other's shadows. Then I looked at the name of the article. It was this solstice, solace for the darkness. A rare conjunction of planets serves as a reminder that there is more to the universe than just ourselves. Many of us have seen and heard of this rare conjunction of the planets, Jupiter and Saturn in the southwestern evening sky. This occurrence may also have been the star of Bethlehem, those many years ago. Other celestial events include the Geminid meteor that graced the night sky this past August. Of course, again, the recent solstice in December, not to mention the billions of stars in the Milky Way right next to us. No matter what is going on in our world now and at the time of Jesus' birth, the universe, God's living creation, the word at the beginning, was doing what the universe does, moving, growing, dying, and giving birth to itself and to us. All that St. John writes is the unity of the word in creation. And as aware as I can be with the peril and fate of the world today, I can say all of it, the good and the bad, can be seen in the delight of that child. And Jesus, whose nativity brings a unity formed in us, as God with us. So yes, watch with broken hearts, children who are separated from their parents, children dying of hunger, children abused and neglected. And Jesus comes to be with them and ultimately in due course to show us the way to relieve that suffering so that we can live with God's delight in us. It will not be done for us, but in us, in prayer, communication, and presence, when we live the Christ life. Again, the writer of this article muses about the universe Subtle as it is, odds are whoever or whatever lives out there will never know that we were here at all, nor will we know them. But we know who we are. We know that we are alive now. We know whom we loved and whom we lost. Maybe that's enough to ask of any universe. I would just add that Jesus, the Word, who was with God in the beginning, knows we are here and is also here with us now in the flow of our life. And this life in Jesus, born our day, is ours to share in all the new ways that we can. Have a very Merry Christmas.
Let us now rise and profess our faith.